and just, you know, be love, lovey-dovey and, and take pictures to post for the gram and, you know, have X, EX. Like, that's a benefit. That's a benefit of it, but that's not the purpose of the marriage. The marriage is actually a ministry. That's the Lord sending you out two by two to advance his kingdom. He has a kingdom agenda. And so the marriage, and just because you're married or you're getting married, does not mean that God joins it together. And when I say it doesn't mean God joins together, you don't, if that marriage was not from the leading of the Holy Spirit to connect you to, um, yeah, I, we don't need to say that, you know, this marriage is from God or it was God or day. You know, we allowed it, you know. But what I'm talking about when it comes to a promise, the marriage, a God or name marriage is you had to surrender your will and be in alignment and God brought you with uh, brought you to a man because there's a purpose in it and so this this promised land is um, fulfillment of purpose and so God is using the two of you to get things done on earth this is part of his kingdom this will be done on to the 
33 times. And Peter was like, oh, surely I, I would never do that. So he was just the one that was riding for Jesus, willing to roll up and beat up somebody for Jesus. And then just a couple of scriptures later, he denied them three times. Aren't you the one that was going around with Jesus? No, I don't know this man. Sorry to this man. So we we think that we're not going to do certain things. But the fact that the Lord keeps telling us, don't do it. We need to listen. And we need to do a heart check um, to make sure, one, we didn't make this promise in idol. And two, we don't become so obsessed or enamored about you know where we're going in this new thing that we forget the reason God gave it to us and so idols that's something that we don't realize it idols it's not just you know a carved wooden um object you know that we see and we laugh at people and, and say how could they make that an idol well people are laughing at us too because there are things we have made idols there are people we have made idols um a lot of us the reason it has taken so long to get um, to the promised land or to get that promised marriage or promised ministry or promised child is because that was our idol. We thought the marriage, this, this man of God, was the best thing ever. We desired that marriage more than God. Anything you desire more than God is your idol. Of course, we don't, we would never just admit it and say, uh, this marriage is my idol. Social media is my idol. This one is my idol. This coffee is my idol. Starbucks is my idol. We would never say it. But that's actually what it is. So God had to break a lot of that. And, you know, I understand why God did not give me the marriage back <laughs> in 2021 when I first met um, the man that he has for me. Because I would have, without a doubt, made him that marriage and I know because I was starting to and that's what God had to break me from making the previous person that I was so um into an idol and you know at first I was thinking oh well this is God you know I can see how this could benefit God's kingdom this and that and it, it was really not for me to benefit God's kingdom it was to benefit myself and so I was so into this person and it took took over a year for God to work with me
original um, Israelites, those were the ones that entered the promised land. It was not. It was their children. It was a different generation. And so, we just need to make sure that that's not us, that we make it out the wilderness. You know, a lot of us thought we were out the wilderness, me included. I thought I was out the wilderness a long time ago. But it's just different stages of the wilderness. Um, pretty much the last stage um, is the testing. It's the testing because God is like, can I, can I trust you? Even with Abraham, you know, when he had the promise trial, you know, we're like, oh, he, he had his promise land. He got the promise trial, Isaac, you know, but actually that last stage was the sacrifice. Now that you got what, what I promised you, what you wanted, could you give it back to me? Because if, if you have made an idol, you, you wouldn't be able to give it back. And so that test right there showed Abraham desire and love to fear God more than anything, anything that God could have given him. So that right there is that test. That right there is your elevation or your promotion out in the wilderness. And so we sometimes forget that there are things that has to happen before God gives us a promise. And I know sometimes you're thinking, well, God already knows, you know, he's Alpha and Omega. He knows our end from the beginning. So he knows if we're going to um, go in and make uh, idols or he knows if we're going to do this or do this. So why would he even put us in a situation to where that would happen? Again, God is sovereign, uh, but we also, we play a part on this earth. You know, we have free will, you know. And God allows us to exercise that free will. But his sovereignty, if anything is going to prevent what he's trying to have accomplished on earth, that's what his sovereignty, uh, his sovereignty, uh, sovereignty sorry, um, comes in. And so he, he determines, he um, handles, what's the word I'm looking for, the outcome. He's in charge of the outcome. So a lot of things can happen in between, but God, the outcome he wants for it, it will happen. That's just how, that's that's why we get out of alignment and we still end up getting where God wants us eventually. Because God's will will ultimately be done. So, it's the reason why Moses kept on reiterating idolatry. Don't make them idols. Don't go in there. Don't do this. And what did they do? They went in there and they did it. And here we are. Uh, <laughs> a product of their mess. And so when God promotes you to the next season, do not make idols. Do not be so um, excited to just get on social media and post about what God has blessed you with, you know? Of course, we want to give God glory and testify. But the purpose is this is not to, you know, get on social media and just try to um, make it more than what God intended for. You know, there are a lot of these unions or ministries, where God is doing, where our platform is going to be on social media, but we have to make sure we're following the leading of the Lord and we're not just trying to be TikTok famous because we see that other couples are TikTok famous. We see that they um, are relationship goals and they, um, you know, because a lot of those, I mean, at least the ones I'm seeing don't got nothing to do with God. They just try to look good, make comical videos, want to be someone's relationship goals. Me personally, if, if God ain't in it, if he ain't got nothing to do with it, if God not leading me to do it, then I'm not doing it. Because I refuse to get into the promised land and fumble the bag. And so, just make sure you stay humble. That's what it talks about also in Deuteronomy. The Lord led you this way, this route. He had to do it like this to humble you. If he, it, best believe, um, if God did not want um, them to go the route, he could have taken them a different route. He could have took them there in one day if he wanted. But he had to humble them. So a lot of times, it's stuff that God did want us to do, but it's stuff that he has to do um, 
in us or get out of us or fix it. Get us right back in alignment for his will to be done. We say, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will, not mine, your will. But for his will to be done, it's a process. Stuff has to happen because nine times out of ten, we're out of alignment. And so if we want the promises of God, it's conditional. This is not salvation. This is promises. This is conditional. So we don't get it without being obedient or following God. We can't be rebellious and do what we want and then have our hand out and think that God is going to bless us. No. So God had to take us this route because he had to humble us. We need to not have a lot of us, when I say us, definitely talking about myself, we were a little too excited about this promise. You know, when I first received this promise of God last year, you know, I got so excited. So excited that, oh my goodness, God is giving me a man of God that we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I, and then especially once I realized who it was and received confirmation, I was too excited. I was too excited. Constantly looking for prophetic words give me updates instead of going to the lord you know planning my life you know now things have shift i'm excited about what god is going to do how we're as a couple going to be a blessing to people and, and, and bring people to christ how we're going to go out and make disciples i'm i'm thinking about the transformation that's going to happen on earth because of two people that god put together I'm thinking about um, the advancement of his kingdom. That's what I'm thinking about. And all the other stuff that's a benefit of the marriage, you know, that's great. But that's not the motivator anymore. It's not the motivator at all. I'm excited about it, but I'm getting more excited that I'm just spending this time with God and growing closer to God. And so, yes, of course, I, I desire the marriage and I'm ready for it. But I'm like, I mean, I really got all I need right now because I have God. It can't anyone take this away from me. Nothing can take the place of this time, this personal time I have with my Lord and Savior. And so, yeah, if it, it can get better than this, when God brings me someone that I'm able to share this with and have God be the center, oh, that's exciting. But that's not the motivator. I'm good right now because I already have God. My happiness, I already have happiness. I already have joy. This marriage, this man, it's just a cherry on top. He'll make it that more better. But he can't add to what God has already done. It's just no, nothing for him to feel a void because I don't have any voice in God completely. You have to be in that area where you can honestly say, man, God, you know what? I want that. I desire it. But if I didn't have
later. Be ready.